Oops. There we go. Okay, I'm here with Bill Sproul of ESS. We talked to you last year, Bill, about the prospects of flow batteries, and mm -hmm. you've got an unusual one, which is combining uh, iron, salt, and water. Right. Um, the lithium ion folks don't think too much about the flow batteries, and they, they make they make a point because, and you pointed out last year too that that flow batteries um, they're, they're they're for large scale operations. Okay? You can't you can't make a flow battery that will fit into a cell phone. Uh, they're not as energy dense. You're right. Yeah. But the real advantage of a flow battery is the capacity of energy that it can store right. versus the nominal power of the interface. Now that's that's the question that's popped up a couple, or the issue has popped up a couple of times. Mm -hmm. What's the cost per kilowatt of your smallest application? Per kilowatt? Yeah. Usually we talk in terms of kilowatt hours because right. we're that's talking right. capacity. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, so we start right now at about $500 a kilowatt hour. Okay. And when we're in volume, which we aren't yet, but in 2018 we'll be in high volume. We'll get that down below $400 a kilowatt hour. That's for a complete turnkey AC system. Okay. So all contained in a container. And what's the, the what's the capa the smallest capacity? The smallest capacity would be 400 kilowatt hours. Okay. And will it ever get down below that? Uh, not by us. We're okay. focused on commercial and utility scale. Okay. But certainly the technology could scale down. Uh, whether it could do it economically or not is a function of how much volume you could really generate at a smaller system. Okay, now, can, can your technology deal with both the energy and the power situation? How you store, you can store power. Mm -hmm. But let's say you have this system set up in a place where there's lots of clouds going over and they've mm -hmm. got to draw immediately from the system. Right. So we, we can go from zero to full power in less than a second. Okay. And in fact, the, the limiter is the communication through the inverter. Uh, if there wasn't that communication lag, we'd be about uh, 0.4 milliseconds. So it's virtually instantaneous that we react with full power. Okay. Because as long as the electrolyte is in the battery module and flowing, mm -hmm. You, you have power instantly, just like you flip on a flashlight switch, you have power instantly. Now, is this starting to pick up better in the United States? Because I understand that the U.S. is still really enamored with lithium ion as a Well, a lot of the storage. applications in the U.S. are short duration, so one or two hour, maybe four hour at the most type applications. And that's more of a power type battery yeah. versus an energy type battery, a flow battery. And so I'd say there's more than half of my opportunities are outside the U.S. because the grids are more challenged. There's more issues that are longer duration type issues. And therefore a, a flow battery or long duration storage battery could do a much better job than with the mine. Okay. It also has the advantage of it doesn't degrade over cycles or time. A flow battery doesn't. Right. Whereas the lithium ion will. If you get out seven, eight years, you'll be at about 70% capacity. Right. From and the that, That's the thing I'm concerned about is that it's, it's going to be an enormous... Essentially, you're, you have to buy two sets of batteries for a solar system. At least. At least. Because you're typically looking at a 25 to 30 year solar system. Now, before we started this interview, I mentioned the problem that's going on in California, mm -hmm. where we're producing so much solar energy that we have to pay other states to take it from yep. us. Is your technology prepared to fix that problem? Oh, we can certainly help and do it on a site-by-site -site basis or at a utility scale. So what you would do on those days where you don't have the demand for the peak output of the solar, is you collect it during the day and shift it to an evening peak when the sun's down. And you could do that day in and day out. With a, a, a flow battery, you could do it without any degradation. Okay, now the $100 million question. Mm -hmm. Is anybody from California talking to you about this? Uh, there's general conversations about it. General, that's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The utilities are uh, are trying to figure out what the best way to use storage is. They're starting out, like I said before, with the shorter duration uh, ancillary service type stuff, frequency regulation, uh, resource adequacy, which is really just having a resource there when a peak demand period happens. Uh, eventually, as more and more of the solar and wind penetrates the grid, they're going to have to do bulk shifting, and that's where the six or eight hours of storage capacity will be important. Are you talking to any of the microgrid communities, especially the residential areas? Uh, we're working with a number of project developers and EPCs in microgrids. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Because a flow battery is a good, stable asset to have in a microphone. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Bill, thank you very much. You bet. Uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Hope you all have all the success in the world. Appreciate it. Thanks.